Hey guys, what's up? Gray here. This week I've been working very hard studying for finals and making videos. I thought that since I've been working in Unity a lot more recently, I would show you what I'm working on now. Before that, I just want to show that only one third of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. Go ahead and hit that sub button, please. Maybe even turn on the notification bell for updates when I upload. Thanks so much. So Android development recently piqued my interest. I've been messing around with different mobile touch functions, and there are three I would like to show you today, and if you like it enough, maybe I'll continue this mobile development series. I have a couple of scripts I want to show you. The first one is going to be a basic tap using buttons. I'll also show you code so you can get a tap for the whole screen, not just a button. The second script will allow you to move a game object around the screen by sliding it with your finger. And the third one will be a finger directional pad so you can use either a joystick or touch the left or the right side of the screen to move your character. So the first script is the basic touch. This will be for any Unity project where you want someone to be able to click their finger somewhere on the screen. Depending on what script you're using depends on where you can click. If you use this basic script, it will take in any touch from the whole screen. Keep that in mind, if you were to hit a button, it would also activate this as well because it's reading all touches on the screen. So this basically just goes through all of the input touch counts uh, and then increases it and then asks if the input get touch phase is starting, then do something. So this will just get the input on the whole screen anywhere you want the person to click. Uh, the actual way to read the specific button is to just create one. All right, let's go to a project and set it up for mobile development. So here I'm going to go to edit and project settings. And to set it up for Unity Remote, if you have a mobile device next to you that you want to plug into your computer, you can set that up here in Editor. And I just select any Android device, uh, JPEG, Downsize Remote, those are probably fine. And then exit out, and then go to your file build settings and make sure you're on the Android. If you're not on the Android, you'll want to hit Switch Platform. I'm going to create a basic UI canvas here. And this will hold all the UI components. And if you right click on Canvas and create a button, so that's UI button. And here we just have a very basic button. You can see it's right here in our game already. You can make it whatever size you want. And uh, basically, if you hit play, you can click on this button. You can see that it gets highlighted. And if I put my mouse here and click on the phone, see, you can see that I'm clicking it with my tap. So that's the basic way to add tap functionality, unless if you were to do the other way with the script, then you just put it on a game object like this. I would just create empty, call it like a um, game manager or something. Then you'd click on the game manager and you put that script right under here on the add component. You just drag and drop. And then since it's a game component, it would read the screen. But this one is just a canvas button, so it already gets input. If you wanted the button to do something, you would just add an event. So hit plus here, and then you can choose if you want runtime or editor. Uh, you could just do runtime if you want, and then you choose the object, which is the button. So I'll put the button here, and then the function. You can do a lot of different things. You can um, change it. You can, uh, yeah, so lots of functionality there. Okay, so now you can click the screen. This is useful for GUI buttons on a main menu, or maybe you just want the player to click the screen to continue. There are a lot of possibilities. The second script is all about moving an object on the screen. This one could come in handy sometimes, but it's not always necessary. Basically, whatever object you add this script to, you will be able to click and drag it anywhere on the screen. You will also need a box collider for this to work, and I might as well change the sprite to make it a car as well. All right, now that we have the car game object sitting there in the game, I can now go into Visual Studios and I will show you how to set up the movement. Go into your scripts folder, right click, create a new C Sharp script, and I'm going to call this touch movement. I already have one called movement. And we're gonna open this up. All right, we have the start and update method. Uh, we probably don't need the start one, so I'm just gonna get rid of that. We are also going to want Unity Engine UI, so using Unity. There we go, and now we can start with some variables. I'm just going to put uh, a public game object so that we can get a game object from our 
assets and we're going to put it in there. We're just going to call it null for now. So now we're going to want to call a uh, array. We're going to So now we're going to want to make a function which is a ray and we can just say ray ray from touch and we're going to make it like that and call a vector three and say this is the touch bar which is equal to a new vector three and we're going to do an input touch as zero okay so that's the zero at the position x and then we're going to want the position y for it so input dot touches dot position y and then we're going to also want the camera camera dot main dot far clip plane perfect semicolon there so what we're going to want to do is the exact same thing just for touch near so just copy and paste that there and do touch near so that's perfect right there. Nothing else should be changed. Except we want touches at zero here. There we go. Bar plane, perfect. Okay. After this, we are going to want two more, the touch position bar and touch position near. So that's two more vector threes. Vector three touch position far is equal to the camera dot main. That's lowercase. And we're going to say screen to world point. This is the, uh, this is what I usually see as the camera function. This one is different. It's for these ones. So don't get them mixed up. Touch bar. Semicolon. And then we're going to do the same thing. So this is, oh, position near and near awesome and then we're going to want to create the ray ray this is a new ray and uh not a ray from touch thank you Jason studios okay ray is a new ray and this is the touch position near touch position bar minus the touch position near Okay, and now that we have that, we can return the ray. Oh, I didn't semicolon. Okay, perfect. And after that, we want the update. So now that we have the update, we can just say if the input dot touch count capital C is equal to one, and the object is not null. So we have an object and there is a touch in the touch count, right? So then we create a ray called touch ray and it's equal to ray from touch. So call that method and then ray cast hit hit. That's a variable that we're going to need. So let's set that for now. Now we're going to do an if statement with some physics for the ray casting. So if physics okay, I spelled that right perfect dot ray cast um, is equal oh come on touch ray dot origin perfect and then touch ray dot direction and the out hit once we have that, we can do the brackets and we'll say object is equal to hit dot transform dot game object. So once the raycast touches it, it will move, it'll transform the game object. So now that we have these two if statements, we're also going to want to check something else. We're going to say else if the input dot touch count is equal to one and there's an object okay 
in here we're going to say the vector three new pause new position new pause is equal to the camera dot main dot screen to world point and in here we're going to say input touches input dot touches sorry at zero dot position perfect and then we're also going to say object dot transform dot position is equal to a new vector three vector three and then we're going to call the new position dot x new position dot y um, the object dot transform dot position Perfect. So now that we do that, we're also going to want to check else if the input touches are zero. So input dot touch count XC is equal to zero, and there's an object. We're just going to say object equals null because you haven't clicked on it yet. There's no touches, so the object is null since you haven't clicked on it yet. If it wasn't null, it's probably because you're about to click on it and then it's gonna move. Or if you are clicking on it, then it should be moving. So it should work now. Let's load this script into the game. I'm gonna save it. All right, fix that. Misspelled it, of course. So let's go back into here. Perfect. All right. So now we are in here. There's no errors. Let's create an empty object and we'll just call this game manager. Now you'll just want to drag and drop the touch movement onto there and it's asking for us to give it an object. So just I'm going to rename this to be car now because it's a car. I'm going to drag and drop car into the object. So now I'm going to play and we'll see if it works. I'm not going to use my mouse. And there we go. I can move the car around with my finger and it is working perfectly smoothly right where my finger is. And yeah, so you can use this with any object. It just has to have a box collider. The third script is something I've just started recently. If anyone has any input on this, I would gladly listen in. There are two different ways I could do this next part. One way is to use a joystick that shows up wherever you press on the screen. Then you can move the joystick in any 360 degree motion and the car would follow. The other way would be to theoretically split the screen in half. This means that if you were to click the left side of the screen, then the car would go left. And the same would be if you click the right side of the screen, then the car would go right. For the third script, I'm gonna set up the joystick. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create a 2D object. Obviously a square, we can just uh, rename this car, make it a car asset, just like this and then call it car. Perfect. And then make sure it's in the view. There we go, now we got our car. And the point of this is we're gonna want a joystick that can move this guy left, right, up, down, whatever we want, right? So the best way to do this is actually to import some assets. So let's go to the store, we go to window package manager. You'll want to download the joystick pack. I'll put a link to it in the description. Hit import and then you'll want to just download it for your project. It'll put it right into the assets folder. So import there. All right, so here we have the joystick pack and what we'll want to do is create a canvas for this. So UI canvas and in here we can just drag and drop a prefab. We'll do the fixed. So this one is just going to sit here and if I hit play obviously it won't really do anything but I can use my mouse or I can use my phone to move that so the joystick is basically already done it's already in which is very nice now all we have to do is make the car move all right we'll go into scripts and create a new C sharp script and we'll call this the uh, joy movement that's for joystick movement but there we go create that open this up all right and here we can remove the start method get rid of that this 
and inside this update we're going to want to say if the input dot touch count is greater than zero and we'll say if this is so that we'll create a touch and we'll create it make it equal to get touch as zero perfect now we can say vector three touch position is equal to camera dot main dot screen to world point and we'll pass in the touch dot position perfect and then we'll want to say touch position is dot z is equal to 0 f and transform dot position equals touch position there we go, and that's all we have to do for this one, so let's exit out of that. And what we're going to want to do is put this on the car. Okay, so movement, put that right there. And now, let's see what happens. Okay, well, um, it is working. So if you can see, it's actually going to where the... Um, the finger is moving so this isn't exactly what we want but it is it's close it's getting there um i wish i had more freedom but i mean it makes sense how it works it would kind of make more sense if i put the joystick in the middle honestly i just put this bad boy here you know and then you could just move the car around it in circles but I don't know, that doesn't work very well, you know, it, but I don't, if that's what you're going for, maybe, so, if this helps you, then perfect. Alright, the second option is to do the left and the right side of the screen. This is going to be pretty simple, I'm going to create a UI canvas, and basically this is just going to have two buttons, so create UI button, and we'll call this left, and then create another one, call that right, perfect. Now we have two buttons. This one we can just uh, make sure we find them on the canvas. There we go. So this one, move aside. This is the left button. So we'll put on the left. It's the right button. So what you want to do is click on the button and you'll see these uh, little arrow things. If you pull it down to 50% and then over and then make sure it's all the way up as well so it fills the whole left side of the screen then you'll want to fill the button so it's the whole side of the left screen same with this one do the arrows that was pretty simple there just do this side and then that side so now you have two buttons on either side of the screen the left button and the right button you will want to open these up and delete the text you don't really need that and on the left here, make the color transparent. Now, once you've done that, select the press color here, and make that about 50%, or you could do like 45. And then same with the other one. You'll want to make the color zero, and then the press color about 45. Also, you'll want to get rid of the image here. So UI sprite, just get rid of it, none. Same with this one, UI sprite image, none. So now that you have both buttons, all we need is a square to control. So 2D object, do another square, and we're going to want to add a box collider 2D as well as a rigid body 2D. And you will definitely want to make sure that the gravity scale is not 1 because uh, it will drop, I believe. So make it about 0 so it doesn't move. Alright, make sure your square is here. And then I'm going to put the movement script right on him, like that. And I don't want his movement speed to 300, that'd be crazy, probably like 50. And then make sure that the square, which, yeah, I can make it the car. Alright, there we go. And then, I'll rename this car. I want the car. 
be the game object. And now we can hit play. So if you see, I have my mouse right here. I'm not really doing anything. But if I hit left or right side of the screen. Oh, see, I keep hitting left. Now I'm going right. Like kind of slows down. It is zero gravity, so it'll kind of continue to go and you have to like slow it down. This might be cool for um, some sort of like brick breaker game. Um, not so much for maybe a car game. I mean, it might work, but especially if I could switch it, if I were to hit the left side of the screen, I could easily just switch what texture I'm using so that's facing left or facing right. But you can let your creativity run wild. I really appreciate all the support from everyone. The last few tutorials I did, I released the code on my GitHub. You can go check out what I've done in Pi Game and Mono Game in the description. If you want the code in this video, please go look at my Patreon page. Every penny counts as it will help me tremendously while in college right now. I hope you all did enjoy and I'll have more content soon. So thank you all for watching and have a nice day.